because I really love to f Welcome back to another episode of the GC Informer. I am Snowy, otherwise known as Count Fracula, and today we've got some rather interesting news to talk about. We will start with a little thing about Mass Effect Andromeda, and if you played the game and enjoyed the story, but weren't quite satisfied with how a lot of things didn't get closed off, well, I have some good news for you. EA have announced, or I think it was EA, yeah, EA or a former Bioware person announced that they're planning on closing off quite a lot of the open story threads within the rest of the side missions of the game, not through a game, but through several other mediums. One of these stories is the Aquarian Arc storyline, and it will be closed off with a novel surrounding uh, a ship of people and the struggles that they befall trying to get to the Andromeda uh, within, like, that. that's how they're going to wrap up that as a novel. And other sort of story arcs will be explored in different ways. While it's clear that these were originally going to be explored upon in expansions to the game, it's a shame that that didn't happen, but at the same time I'm very glad that all these open story threads are going to get uh, closed off. And if you are one of those people who really loves uh, Bioware's stories and the way they're all told, then this might just be a little bit of satisfaction for you. Steam Curators! Remember that thing? that. Uh, was a good idea but poorly implemented like a lot of the things that Valve seemed to do, it's getting a rather large update. The update itself focuses quite a lot on the interaction between curators and developers. People who have a curator page linked to their account will now be able to get review codes linked directly to them through their curator page like through Valve and Steam, as opposed to the developers having to send a key, which is something that Valve are for some reason trying to crack down on. Also, creators will be able to link to YouTube videos or a couple of other sites' videos on the subject of those games if they happen to have made them. So there may be some kind of account linking going on there just so that you're not spamming someone else's random video onto your own curator review. And there will of course be various sort of authentication processes to go through with the whole key giving system to make sure that developers are actually giving keys and access to genuine curator accounts linked to things rather than just like Johnny from down the street. There is also quite a lot of sort of UI UX uh, based upgrades, including the ability to add your own personal background. And there's a lot of sort of updates for uh, users to find different curators based on their tastes. Steam doing what they do will use graphs and algorithms to try and recommend curators for you who recommend a lot of the types of games that you might like based on your interests, buying habits and playing habits because that's just how Steam does everything. And now curators can also group games, like they can have groups of games in a list or they can do a lot, they have a lot more freedom of how they organise the games that they are recommending slash curating. Quite nice updates, I'm liking what I'm seeing, I really hope that this sort of revives the whole curator thing a little bit because it's a very good idea, it's a really good way to get people recommending good games to buy on Steam and it got got left behind when it launched and I'm really hoping that this sort of breathes a bit more life into it. A lot of you might remember last year that Bioware, not Bioware, why am I saying Bioware? It's Bethesda, I'm a twat. A lot of you might remember last year that Bethesda had a review policy like they sort of announced their review policy going forward that they wouldn't be giving review copies of games up until the day of launch or the day before launch. This was apparently so that everyone can experience the game at the same time, but in reality was more probably to do with the fact that if a game is bad and gets bad reviews before launch, it won't sell very well. This, of course, shouldn't really have been a worry for Bethesda because, let's be honest, they had very good games and it seems that this might, this policy might have actually hurt them more than helped them. 
If you actually look at their sales figures, things like Prey and um, what's their most recent one? Fucking hell. Well, things like Dishonored 2 and their most recent one, which I forget. Evil Within 2, that was it. Uh, they have had very poor sales in comparison to previous games in their respective series and it seems that this could be partially put down to the review policy because none of these games received bad reviews but they received reviews later on down the line which may have hurt launch sales. This may explain why several outlets have actually received copies for the newest Bethesda game which is Wolfenstein The New Colossus quite a bit earlier, up to at least a week beforehand in comparison to previous, like, the last year's worth of launches. By all accounts, Wolfenstein 2 is in fact a very good game, and good because I was actually thinking of picking that up at some point, and this might help launch sales to be honest because, you know, if a game comes out with good reviews already under its belt, that's going to help a lot of sales on launch day, and I think Bethesda might have realised this. So the moral of the story is, don't be underhanded, don't be shady, and just make good games, because let's be honest, that's probably easier than trying to cover up a shit one. Especially nowadays. And finally, a fun little story that I'm going to tie into a little thing I'm going to do at the end of the video. I got a Switch fairly recently, and there's a whole thing about, oh, the Switch cartridges taste disgusting, so I'm going to find out for myself if you stick around for a little bit. And if you don't want to do that, fine, but whatever, it's, it's played out, I suppose. But anyway, um, a fun little story about Super Mario Odyssey reviews. You might have heard of the internet commentator Jim Sterling. My partner doesn't care for him at all, I think he's got some very valid points about the industry. And um, a lot of people have a thing against him, especially it seems Nintendo fans, who will basically leave it any reason to just shout at him. And this is um, sort of come back to bite them in the arse today, because uh, there was a review that he didn't write about Mario Odyssey that was on Metacritic, it wasn't on Metacritic, there was just a fake screenshot made up of a 70 out of 100 review. Bear in mind Jim Sterling has said that he's not doing reviews anymore, like he's just gonna say if, a ga if he thinks a game's good or not when he plays it, and this went up on the internet and proper Nintendo fanboys lost their shit. In a very funny twist of events, they were sharing this screenshot around going, oh, look at this, this is so stupid, using it to criticise him in every way. And he didn't do it. It's a complete fabrication. He has not made a single review of Super Mario Odyssey. In fact, at the time of recording, according to him on Twitter, he hasn't even played it yet. So I think that's endlessly hilarious. Also, it's an example of actually do a little bit of research on things before you start just joining in and shouting instead of just seeing one little picture and think that that's proof. Because if you actually go to Metacritic, there is no review under Jimquisition and there's no review of that score. So well done, presumptuous internet Nintendo fanboys. You've made some amusement for us. And that's it for this episode of the GC Informer. Stick around if you want to see me taste a Switch cartridge. If you don't, too bad. And you're going to have to go through the little promo bit first anyway. If you like our stuff, then please give us a like, subscribe, or a share, whatever you fancy. And a link to our Discord is down in the description, along with all of our other social links where you can join in some public chat. If you like me, I can be found on Twitch at twitch.tv slash metalnerddude and on Twitter at at snowyduffield. That's all from Gamecast for today. Stay tuned for more news, reviews, podcasts, let's plays and release radar based things that are all of your gaming needs. And I'm going to taste a Switch cartridge. Goodbye! I'm not joking either. Here's, here's the box. Uh, just brand new. Just got it today. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, kill the headphone users. Oh, there we go. There's, there's the cartridge. 
And uh, yes, this does apparently taste disgusting. I'm getting a look. And um, oh, oh, it's, it's there. It's like an aftertaste. Oh yeah. That, ooh. Oh. Oh, that's really. Oh. I don't know how to just. Oh god, that's right in the back of my throat. Fucking hell. I really don't know how to describe that taste. It's. It's. Um. Oh fucking hell. Oh man. It's like. It's like I've put something in my mouth that I shouldn't have. Funnily enough. Oh god. <laughs> Goodbye. Fucking hell. Oh man, that's genuinely awful. I didn't actually think. Like, I, I licked it, and I was just like, oh, it didn't taste of anything. What's going on? I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, the taste. Oh, have you got water over there? Thank you. And can you take that and put it where it's supposed to go, please? Oh, no. In this... What do you mean, no? Oh. Oh, that's better. Oh, my tongue's gone really dry now. Vape water. vape water. Oh, vape water. Yeah. Why is it vape water? Vaporized. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> it's like someone's vaping this stuff. 